presentation's title uh, today is The Bhaktas and the Priest, How the Old Adversaries Came Together to Revive and Reinterpret Tradition. It sounds fascinating. Thank you for that. I, I'm standing in front of everyone and ready to have a heart attack as always, <laughs> and especially that it's Oxford now, so uh, news of my heart attack would reach my home department. Uh, what am I going to say? Yes, I'm a, I'm a PhD candidate. Uh, in case you wonder how long does it take to get a PhD in Poland because my hair is grey, I'll say that I used to be a cameraman and editor uh, in film and television before I went back to academia. And I now teach students how to make ethnographic films so they can do them themselves and not count on anyone to do films for them and have loose models when it comes to filmmaking. All right, so now if my password is down again, and I can say that my presentation today is entitled The Batas and the Priest, How the Old Adversaries Came Together to Revive and Reinterpret Tradition. Now everyone knows who priests are, so I'd better say who the Batas are. Uh, the Bazas are basically head shepherds. Head shepherds uh, in Poland take up the sheep from uh, various owners and take them up to the mountains for the pastoral season and then they come down. And winter is the dead season, but bracketing the winter there are two important uh, <coughs> celebrations, uh, sometimes uh, even bigger than you might call them festivals, and they are uh, <clears throat> in autumn, the sheep come back from the mountains after the season, and it's a big celebration. And then in the spring, before the sheep go out, there is the so called festival of Nishani Obvious, which means literally the mixing of the sheep. And the purpose of it is to gather the sheep from all the owners who would have like five sheep, ten sheep, and take up a big herd and make sure that this herd would stick together for the whole season and not get lost, not wander off, just keep them together. So this would happen in the spring. And now, in the old days, the Bartas and the priests were adversaries, you could say, because now you have, I have to go back to the 14th century to tell you why. It is because the uh, pastoralist economy came to the southern Poland with the Wallachian migration. Uh, those uh, people brought with them sheep and this new way of uh, making mountains profitable because agriculture always failed there and pastoralism was one of the way to settle the mountains and have income from taxation. So they came, but it wasn't without the incidents that they came. A chronicle, chronicler in 1409 describes how they basically uh, came and burned and raped and pillaged a town of Sanch. So they had a reputation for violence, thievery, and to top it all off, they were a bit of a different religion. Uh, they, uh, they were, you know, they were not Roman Catholics, so they were also heretics, you know, heathens almost. So, so they came, and this pastoralist economy started like that. Late in the later centuries, they have dissolved with the general population, kind of, but uh, the Batas, they, they come from that tradition. And now the Bata spent the whole season up in the mountains with the sheep, up in the alpine pastures, up next to the woods, next to nature, uh, some magical beings, some god, maybe, and maybe the devil. Who knows? Who knows where they were getting the power from, but they were getting power. They're, they were renowned healers, obviously they need to be able to tend to the sheep and, and heal them, uh, you know, up on the pastures, there were no veterinary services, 
and also they were healing people as well. There are records of even city people who the doctors couldn't help traveling far, di far distances up to the mountains, up to the batas to get help with their ailment, ailments. So they were getting, they were, they, were, they were close to, they were liminal creatures, right? And who knew where that power came from? And the priests were very suspicious of them because, you know, they could do stuff the priests couldn't do, including, in some cases, bringing back the dead. Well, now, you know, like, now that's quite a trick. So they, they have had the, this magical power, and people would come to them with their problems. And sometimes uh, those problems would be of criminal nature, because, uh, and, and obviously if you were coming to the battles with this problem, these kind of problems, they were not uh, all that, uh, not all of the battles must have been very ethical. So here is one story of an ethical bata refusing to help a woman get rid of her husband who was kind of old and she had a new guy that she wanted to marry. So she came to this bata Bulanda in the Gorza Mountains and she said to him, listen, you know, do something, kill my husband. Uh, to which he said, oh, so you'd like to dance with a young guy now? dance with this stick, at which point he put the stick into the ground and the poor woman was taken over by the sudden desire to dance with around the stick for a whole day until the sun set. So, so and, and, then, and then he released her from the spell and said to her, you know, like, don't do that anymore. Another trick, you know, the Vatas entered into magical content, contest uh, about which the whole villages talked about for years. One such contest that involves bringing, uh, bringing from back from the dead is one bata uh, magically killed the herd of another bata. Uh, and the bata whose herd was killed came and saw his sheep dead and then he cut off the head of one of the sheep. All the other sheep were revived and the perpetrator's head on the other side of the mountains fell off. So, they were shrouded in these sort of stories and obviously uh, the priests were not happy about that. Uh, and they were, you know, admonishing on Sundays, you know, not to go to the bathhouse with these problems because prayer is so much better. However, there is, there is a record of, of one priest uh, giving his imprimatur to these sort of practices because he couldn't get rid of the devil out of his own cow shed. So he called this Bulanda, Bata, and he, the Bata did manage to get rid of the devil from, from the cow shed, at which point the priest said, you have, you can do all your magical practices for you, for, because you do them for the good of the people and not against them. So, but that was quite a rare uh, occasion. So, the mixing of the sheep was a magical affair. There were magic spells. Uh, it was a quiet affair. It was the, the sheep owners and the batsa. And the batsa did his spells, did things like uh, purify the herd with uh, smoke and sprayed holy water on it. Now, it's like you ask me yourself, like, well, holy water, or what about the priest? Well, you know, holy water is freely available in the church, so uh, the priest did not have to be there when the holy water was taken. Therefore, oh, there was also another custom that they did. They would uh, run the herd through uh, old trousers, you know, make them pass through old trousers over them, because, well, trousers are meant to keep things together. You know, so, so the sheep were also supposed to keep together, not get lost throughout the season. So that's what used to happen. However, at the end of 1980s, the Australians, they totally killed the wool market. And what happened is, as before, things from the 14th century were kind of 
continuing along the same kind of path, everything has changed. The prices went down, the communism fell, and all of a sudden, from 5 million sheep in Poland, we now have 227,000. It means, like, people who are dealing in sheep, who are pastoralists, who are bazaars, they kind of disappeared. They, they got old, they got died. Not many new entrants to the jobs. Not, some with family traditions, some without. So now there is this movement to revive pastoralism in the Polish mountains, and with EU subsidies, with agri environmental programs with, with you know it's good for ecology it's good for everyone it's good for the culture of the region so they try to revive that as, as part of that revival they also try to do the mixing of the sheep so but however like I said they do not have the magical knowledge so Oh, this is the you know, magical powers of the bats. So this is still, it's still, it's this, this is an article from like esoteric kind of magazine in Poland from 2016. So what happens when you don't have family traditions and you don't feel you are a magician? What do you do? Well, like this guy who actually, uh, you know, read. He is a bata, but he read. Uh, a lot about pastoralism and old customs. He says, like, oh, well, I don't feel like a magician. So the whole thing of mixing of the sheep in his village starts with a mass, which is kind of... That, that never would have happened before. Okay, I'm gonna open it. Okay, we have a... So that's why it's going slow. I wonder if I should just copy this other film I want to show you to the hard drive uh, into a desktop. So another little film I want to show you is something which is totally out of this world for me. It is invented tradition of Luzmierz, which is like dream mixing of the sheep from the whole region. Like, how do you do that? Like, I have no idea. But, what they do, they get a little herd of sheep of around 200. They have a huge mass. Shepherds and bazaars from the whole region, as far as even Slovakia come, sometimes Romania as well. And, and the priests come out and they bless these sheep. And in blessing those sheep, they bless all the sheep around in Carpathians. And it's also like, you know, I, I call it mixing of the sheep by proxy because I, I fail to have another name for it. Uh, and and it's, it, happens, it happens before the bazaars mix their sheep uh, individually. You put it on the best. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I just think. You just. Left. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
This was incidentally an election year. So the president's wife was there, the army was there, God knows who wasn't there. You know? And now, final slide. Yes. Is this. Yes, it's a bit of a quiz. Now, this is not shampoo. No. <laughs> yeah, you got that. And this is not shampoo. Well, what do you, what do you think it is? It's water from Lourdes, obviously. Yes, very, very water close. Water from Lourdes. It's a it's holy water, water from Lourdes. So they got uh, yeah. their own holy water supply of uh, miraculous water. And this water gets blessed at that pre mixing in Lourdes. And then the individual batters take this shampoo like uh, bottles. <laughs> Up to the individual mixing of the sheep, and then it's like whew. so the pre blessing, the blessing, and they also, yeah, other stuff goes on there as well. One more thing why is it Ludwig? Why is it Ludwig? Well, Ludwig is a very special place for the, for the Highlanders for lots of reasons, but historically, it's, it's been like the, the biggest. Uh, and most important sanctuary, the Catholic Church in the region, which has mm -hmm. its own story of how it was founded, why this water so is so miraculous, and so it's like the word for the Port region. Thank you very much. Thank you.